All right. Uh, hello, hello, YouTube. Super excited to be here. I'm Claudia Mühlenweg, creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method, and I'm here with my friend and fellow Bates Method Vision teacher, Nathan Oxenfeld. Hello, Claudia. Really happy to be here today. Thank you so much for the invite and getting involved. Excited to go over this topic today with you. Same here. Thank you so much. And you know, you are you have the Bates Method 101 um show on YouTube, right? The the you so tell us a little bit about the couple of things that you do. Um obviously you have a I think way bigger YouTube following than I do, so people might know you. <laughs> Yes, it's been fun to share this natural vision work in a couple different avenues in, in the form of the videos on YouTube. Um, I have a lot of fun putting out the podcasts each month, whether it's kind of like your Clear Vision Wednesday style of kind of interviewing other practitioners and kind of going through some tips or the Better Eyesight podcast where sort of like the Bates Method book club where we go through and read through the original articles that, that Dr. William Bates was publishing a hundred years ago, and then kind of unpacking them in the 21st century with modern vision teachers like, like you and I, um, and cause everybody has different learning styles. So I know some people really like to get the visual aspect with the videos. Some people really like learning by listening. And, um, I've also released a book so that people have the, the written version as well with the, you know, instructions to follow over, you know, via text. Um, and I think we might mention towards the end the probably the most fun thing that I've had uh, to create is the documentary that we got to interview you in and feature you in of the Vision 2020 from Eyesight to Insight documentary uh, being a way to kind of introduce natural vision improvement to people, not only who have never heard of it before, but also people who do have a background in it. It'll kind of like give them something new to play with or sort of a new aha moment that they didn't have before. So that's been a, yeah, a lot of fun I to just do all that, this. Sorry, I put that in the show notes, so I'm going to put it in the Zoom chat as well. So yeah, so we, we you mentioned the Bates, or I mentioned the Bates method. And basically, for those of you out there that are interested in natural vision improvement, the Bates method is kind of the foundation. It's like when you say I'm a yoga teacher, right? There's so many different ways of teaching yoga, but there's the core principles. And the Bates method, or Dr. Bates was an eye doctor 100 years ago. We don't want to go too much into that, but he discovered that vision can be improved just like it can be declined. And however, he was an outcast back in the day, and they thought what he was teaching is crazy. And now with neuroscience confirming pretty much everything Bates talked about. Um, so we're not going to dive too much into that, but we our topic is dry eyes. And we wanted to look at that from a Bates method perspective because it's a holistic and natural approach. And one of the things that most people get from their eye doctor when they have dry eyes is eye drops, right? So Nathan and I, we usually try to get our clients away from eye drops, but we do want to say here very at the very beginning, we are not giving you medical advice. We are not telling you if you take currently eye drops, so throw the eye drops away because a dry cornea can get scratched and that's a way higher risk. So please, 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 with everything we're teaching today, so don't think, just throw them away. But the strategies that we're using to teaching you today, I have helped like hundreds of clients re resolve, um, resolve their dry eyes. And, and for, for those of them that had eye drops, be able to slowly wean themselves off the eye drops. So Nathan, you wanna add anything to that piece? Yeah, obviously, it, it kind of depends on what what the individual's relationship is with eye drops. If, the, if it is, if it has become sort of a habitual thing or a daily thing or something that we, we end up kind of depending on in order to have, you know, lubricated eyes, then I think it's a good time to figure out, oh, I wonder if there's other ways I can kind of activate my own tear production system um, and maybe eventually not need the drops as much or if at all. And the other thing I just wanted to bring in is um, not all eye drops are equal. Um, so I know that I used to use a lot of over-the-counter eye drops, like the, you know, big name brands. And, you know, they ended up having different kinds of preservatives and chemicals in there that maybe I didn't necessarily want in my eyes. And so there are more gentle eye drops, things like homeopathic eye drops and, and things that don't have preservatives in them. And they actually have ingredients that are beneficial to the eye tissue. Um, so maybe you know, we could provide some specifics um, either in the show notes or just mention a couple like um, examples or brands that 
I've used or you've used in the past or some of the students have used? Yeah, that's a really good point. So the most of the commercial eye drops have preservatives and chemicals in them. And I think what you touched on, that's one thing we don't want that for our eyes. And the second part is, is it a Band-Aid? Are, are you addressing the root cause or not, right? Or is there some systemic underlying issue? Like we had uh, Divya Daran on last week and she talked about Sjogren's syndrome, which has like a whole dryness of mouth. Like it's a, that's a whole systemic autoimmune disease that you have to address, you know, differently than you would have to address if you just have dry eyes from not blinking enough or something like that. So there is obviously a whole bandwidth of dry eyes and it's really important for the health of your eyes, for your eyes to be lubricated and moist. And so let's just jump right into the, 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 the tips that we have. And I know we have a little bit of an order, but I'm gonna jump around a little bit because I already mentioned blinking. So that's my first tip is so, so simple. And um, I remember one of my dear friends, he passed away at 101 years old. He blinked every second. He never wore glasses his whole life, had perfect vision. Both his parents had glasses. So blinking um, is actually something you wanna do really frequently, ideally every two to three seconds. And studies have found that people, when we look at each other's faces, we blink a whole lot more naturally. Kind of, it's like, you know, nothing worse than somebody staring at you. But when we look at screens, we forget to blink. And that's a lot of times, right? The dry eye syndrome and the computer vision syndrome sometimes go hand in hand. So simple blinking a little bit more. Yeah. And it's one of these very simple, I mean, we blink anyway, we are, we, we can't not blink. So it's just the kind of thing that we, we can sort of start to reward and maybe consciously increase. Um, I like how you mentioned sort of the time frequency ballpark um, you know, blinking every couple, two, three, four seconds, you know, just as a starting point. Uh, but I also love that little blinking reset, the butterfly blinks, where you can blink really rapidly for maybe 10 or 20 or 30 seconds, just not with strain. We want to keep it kind of soft and light. And then something about that fast blinking, and then we just sort of stop or we we just close the eyes. It, it seems to do something with those blinking muscles that maybe would sort of reset them to hopefully a more kind of natural rhythm. Uh, but not everybody's able to blink very fast or uh, might take a little bit of practice, especially if those muscles are kind of strained already. Yeah, I like slow motion blinking sometimes too, as if you're trying to like slowly close the garage mm -hmm. door and then you slowly open it up again. So you can have some fun with this. And the key piece is it only takes 10 seconds of not blinking to thin out your tear film. And that's kind of the aqueous layer, right? The tear film has three different layers. And one of them is that watery layer. And if we don't blink, it's like it, it evaporates, right? It's simple evaporation. Like you thin it, your tear film out because it's it's like, you know, dry, open, open eyes at night or something, or when you have your eyes open too long. So I think one of your tips was, uh, you already touched on that a little bit. Uh, you wanna go into that one? Yeah. Uh I've, I've kind of kind of like the slow motion blink. Um, one, one thing I've been talking about lately is sort of like a long blink or just where we actually, instead of blinking and opening up immediately, so it's like a fraction of a second, we actually just close and maybe we keep them closed for one second or two seconds or three seconds before opening up. And, and that not only does that allow a chance to cover the eyes, get, hopefully kind of rebuild that tear film a little bit, um, but I think it kind of hits one of those Bates method principles of just general relaxation and just taking a moment to close the eyes. I've kind of come to this conclusion that, you know, this is very oversimplified, but based off of what you just said with the evaporation of the tear film, so many people's eye issues and, and vision problems can be connected to simply having their eyes open too much. <laughs> And like not blinking enough, not closing enough, not not taking time to palm or, or just give our eyes the, the rest they deserve. So give yourself a little present of a little long blink right now. Just close, take a deep breath and open back up. And even, if, even though it's just a short little thing, it's like a little mini gift that you give your eyes throughout the day. Hopefully that'll be a little bit more realistic to kind of incorporate into screen time or everyday activities. Whereas maybe you're like, oh, well, I don't have time to palm or it's this more kind of formal thing. But 
Dr. Bates himself said that sometimes it's enough to just close the eyes and, and we can get the rest and the relaxation uh, from that. I love that. In fact, everybody watching right now, we're not going to have any slides, you know, maybe once in a while we will show something, but we can let you know, just close your eyes and use this opportunity to like turn off that visual feed that we are, this is so much in our heads all the time. So I think it's also a mental reset to kind of, you know, get out of that outer world and kind of connect a little bit with our body and how we feel and how our eyes feel and that feeling of relaxation. So I think that's a really, really fantastic way to do it. It's just closing your eyes a little bit more. And um, in my episode on visual illusions, um, I talked about how Dr. Bates actually visual illusion blinking i'm like how is that an illusion and he said that people with perfect eyesight they don't even realize how much they close their eyes they that they blink right they kind of they think their eyes are open all the time they're not even aware of it but they do it and if you have dry eyes or blurry vision you probably tend to stare and not blink so that's a big yeah. one um and then you already so we have blinking we have closing the eyes more and then um, you want to talk about, you mentioned that already a little bit, the palming. So palming is kind of a, a more, even better way to help your dry eyes than, than just uh, closing the eyes. Can you, you want to talk a little bit about palming, why you think that's so fantastic? Yeah, uh, maybe first though, before we, we do some palming, because I'd love to actually just experience it. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to kind of come back to this foundational idea with, um, really simply looking at if we have dryness in the eyes, um, what counteracts dryness. We start off by talking about putting eye drops into the eyes, but maybe people listening or watching can also take a moment to put some moisture into their mouth and maybe take some, some water okay. in. So like just the whole topic of like hydration, like making sure that, you know, our eyes are getting the, the moisture that they need from our, our liquid intake. And I mean, that's kind of an obvious one, but um, if your body's dehydrated, then your eyes are probably going to be dried out as well. Um, but I really one. look, yeah, um, the, the palming, like just what we were doing just a moment ago, closing the eyes, it felt so good to just take a moment to close. And I kind of look at the palming as just sort of the next way to deepen that where we just go to an even deeper level of darkness and relaxation. Because even when your eyes are closed, there's still light passing through and stimulating your retinas and optic nerves. So if the hands, the center of the palm comes and covers up the, the closed eye uh, without putting any pressure on the eyes or, or touching the eyes at all, the hands are cupped and it, they're, they're just there to create this field of darkness. So everybody and, do long, follow along. Let's palm a little yeah. bit while he's talking. <laughs> yeah. And, Usually it helps to have something to rest your elbows on um, if it's a little bit of a longer session. But um, even if you're just floating your arms up, we'll just palm for, for a minute or two, just realizing that it only takes like 30 seconds to start to feel the heat generate in your hands and start to increase maybe that warmth feeling in the eyes, around the eyes. And just letting everything kind of calm down and rest. I always think about palming as a way to open up the channels of my eyes. And if we're talking about dry eyes, we're really talking about like the, the different pathways that the fluid passes through the, the lacrimal glands, the tear ducts, the drainage canals. So if, if we're strained or stressed or tight or tense, it's almost like there's constriction up there and the fluid gets all stopped up. It, it, it can't flow properly. So when I palm my eyes and I enjoy that heat and that darkness, it's like things are opening up. There's more flow happening and there's more fluid exchange happening. And it certainly <laughs> doesn't hurt to maybe imagine or visualize some water, like a, a waterfall or a stream or some waves crashing in the ocean. You know, you kind of folding in the, the brain power and the power of visualization if your goal is to have more moist, lubricated eyes, then think about wet things and, and bodies of water and, and flowing water. And it may may just kind of help with that process of relaxing and kind of encouraging what we're what we're after here. 
or maybe even thinking of, you know, a loved one or somebody where you're like, oh, I'm so, you know, where you feel really relaxed because that also helps yeah. with yeah. making it. I love that. So I'm going to slowly come out of it. And how, the way I like to come out of it is I just keep my eyes closed and I just leave my move my hand slowly away and let my mm -hmm. eyes get used to the light because it's it's amazing how much light comes through the eyelids itself. And then when I'm ready to come back, I usually do a few, like I call them five butterfly blinks and I've gently squeezed my eyes five times. And what that does, it also, you know, the lacrimal glands are here and just squeezing your eyes a little bit will also help you produce a little bit more of that moisture. So that's another little thing you can do. Um, do you want to add anything to palming or should we move on? Only one thing to add is that I think that there, there's an importance of uh, movement during calming, which may seem a little counterintuitive at first because we're just sitting still in the dark, but we don't want to stare when we palm. So uh, maybe if you can reflect on that experience we just did of like when you were in palming, were you able to notice your eyes moving at all or did it feel like they were just sort of parked? And in my opinion, if they're parked, we're probably more staring in that staring mode, still maybe some tightness or tension or stress. But if you can, you know, relax to the level of just feeling the eyes maybe adjusting or even like blinking, even though the eyelids are down, just feeling some activity or movement there, not like an exercise, but just like, oh, they're, they're there, they're alive, they're dynamic. To me, that that is a sign of more relaxation and more like circulation happening. Um, so that to me is where the visualizations come in. If I'm picturing a babbling brook, you know, and like water going down some rocks and pebbles and stuff that gets my eyes to get out of that staring mode. And it seems like they start to kind of shift a little bit more naturally. Interesting. Yeah. I used to imagine that I'm my eye, like I'm in a hammock, my eyes are in a hammock and it's just moving slowly. Yeah. Wonderful. Nice. So so we have, so just to recap, we had, we talked about water. We skipped over water just a little bit. I wanted to add to that, like I would add electrolytes. A lot of people are very short on sodium or salt and, and magnesium. So that's really helpful. Also helps with sleep. And then we had blinking. We had closing the eyes, simply closing the eyes more. Um, you know, not sometimes we don't need to look at something, right? We're like listening to, we don't always need to look. We can definitely give the eyes a little break. We talked about palming and we also talked about a little bit with that. We led it a little bit into that idea of uh, imagination and visualization, like which you can do when you're palming. You can visualize something that's really relaxing. You can think about something moist, um, whatever it is, but something that makes you feel good. You can maybe feel a little bit of that movement so that you're not staring or letting go of that tension. Um, but there's other things, you know, the memory and imagination or visualization is a huge part of the Bates method. I would say it's almost 90% because it's not eye exercises. That's just really the big piece that surprised me when I first learned this. And imagination or visualization, you know, is that, that concept of even with eyes open, right, you can, you can slowly start to imagine something that, you know, maybe it feels like there's a lake or there's moisture you know and this is about dry eyes but we use imaginations for clearing up letter for everything but do you want to add anything to the idea of you know with your eyes open you can also continue to imagine or maybe also use self-talk like instead of saying my eyes are dry and I now I'm switching a little bit Nathan but you know a lot of times we say I have dry eye syndrome or I have dry eyes like you know maybe also while you're imagining your eyes to be moister more, more moist you can also change your, how you talk. You know, my eyes are getting more moist. They're getting more, however you want to say it, right? But detach yourself from that dry eye syndrome. You want to add something to that? Yeah. It, like, I think a, a popular thing that, that people are probably familiar with is like these white noise machines or, or these kind of like nature sound tracks and things. So one potential example of like, activating this with the eyes open too like even if you're on the computer maybe you can have sound of water in in the background and just even hearing that sound so it's not even necessarily a visual of it it's more of an auditory reminder of of the water and, and the flow and the movement 
um, you know, just get, getting kind of creative of like, how, how can I support myself in this? Um, not just by trying really hard to make my eyes squirt out more tears, but, um, uh, you know, just more of a holistic kind of approach. You know, that's, that's, that's so funny that you're, you're mentioning that about imagining. I love to actually use the rain. Like, even though I'm from Germany where it yeah. rained a lot and I hated the rain, but when I'm sometimes can't sleep, which happens very rarely, I love the sound of rain uh, or thunderstorms. So it's yeah. definitely like, it's very calming. So here's the thing. The first thing I ever learned, like, I think I was like 16 or something when I started with the Bates method. And the first thing I learned in a book that I had back then was yawning. And I was like, yawning? Like, how is that? And so yawning and stretching is still one of my favorites. And I think yours too, because when you yeah. yawn, you know, you lubricate your eyes and you also stretch those often really tight, especially the massive ah. of the muscle, right? So stretching and yawning. And when we go, when we go to conferences in person, right? The vision teachers, everybody's always yawning. And when you go to other conferences, everybody's like trying to hide their yawning because but yawning is actually yeah. really good for your body to relax and it's good for your eyes. So yeah, and just after two, two, three yawns, I'm I'm already feeling my eyes more moist just immediately. Um, and it's helpful that it's contagious too. So hopefully just by watching Claudia and I yawn or hearing us yawn, it actually just kind of triggers that. Uh, even like what, what I find interesting is even when we just see the word yawn, we yawn, <laughs> you know, it has such a, a kind oh, of neurological trigger to it. Um, but yeah, usually I encourage people to embrace the yawn and, and really ride the wave. So like, maybe don't just stop after one, why not do five or six or seven and, and just kind of, yeah, let, let that oxygen in. Um, and and then definitely following it with the blinking, right? So using analogy of a car, what we just did with the yawning is like putting the windshield wiper fluid up on the windshield. And then the blinking is like the windshield wiper coming and kind of smoothing the surface out and getting any dust and debris off. So yeah, definitely kind of combining the yawning tear production and then the blinking to kind of create that nice smooth tear film as well. Yeah, I love that. So yawning is one of those things that I just, I think it's so magical and also resets your old system. You're getting, if you're stressed, sometimes yeah. there's even yawning, like you, you know, it works such a, like this a psychological sigh, I think they call it, where you're like, ah, you know, it just mm, resets your yeah. system to relax. So, and it's so wonderful for the eyes. I love it. Um, so we have, we have a bunch more things here and I'm trying to think what we should go next to, and we haven't all of it. I think I'm going to skip a little bit because one thing that palming does and is the heat. So with heat, um, you know, when we, when we have in my hands were really pretty cold, that's something I, we didn't talk about, but if your hands are really cold, you can totally rub the hands together really fast to make them warm. Mm -hmm. But heat also helps to like the mybobian glands, right? Like the inside here sometimes something is blocked or stuck so some, the heat can actually help you kind of release some of that you know the 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 fatty layer of the tear film right maybe and, and the mybobian glands you can sometimes with the heat actually release some of that and it's almost like you know a hard stick of butter and then you're melting it or something i couldn't think of a better mm -hmm. example <laughs> um yeah. but basically or like right? wax you know like wax, yeah, wax can sort of harden up and then kind of melt yeah so you can use, you can do hot compresses, you know, where you have like a washcloth, you know what you used to get in the plane where you got those nice warm washcloth and you can put that over your face or they have some um, eye masks that you can put in the microwave or in hot water that you can just use. There's some commercial eye masks too that create that effect, but something warm on your eyes could feel really good. Or you can try something that I've learned is we call it splashing. So it's just hot water and you just, you know, not too hot that you burn yourself, obviously, but you splash that into your closed eyes and you just splash the water and then alternate it with cold water. So you're actually improving the circulation around the eyes. So you can do the way I do it is I, I haven't done it much here in Los Angeles because the water doesn't really get that super hot and cold, like the way I like it in Germany. But basically I did um, warm, cold, warm, cold in the morning so that I start stuck with cold water in the morning to wake up and then in the evening I did cold warm cold warm so that I ended with warm and 
So you can do the water or you can do use a compress or you can also just use your hands for, and do palming. Yeah, yeah, I, there, there's, you can't really beat that feeling of putting that warm washcloth over the eyes and just letting that heat transfer happen. And it just absorbs into not only the, the eyelids and the eyelashes where you're specifically talking about targeting to kind of open up those oil glands, mm -hmm. but also just deeper, you know, all the muscles in the eyes seem to kind of release and, and melt some of that tension. And, uh, and Dr. Bates did talk about that hot, cold therapy of kind of going back and forth to get that vasodilation, vasoconstriction piece. Uh, so I, I, I do both as well. I do the hot compresses and I have one in the freezer. I just leave in the freezer. So I put that on the eyes and get the cold, you know, to go back and forth. Yeah. And, um, we, you know, we, we, let's talk about the light. We talk, we we'll have light too, but let's talk about that maybe more toward the end because we, there's, so there's several things I've recently posted something on Instagram. I rediscovered, I've been using them for years. But the castor oil, so castor oil is really wonderful. It has so many benefits and helps replenish that, um, that lipid layer of the tear film. And it also draws out toxins and it improves circulation and um, lymph drainage. So it's a really, really powerful way. And it also can prevent infections because it's anti-inflammatory. And I don't, this is from Queen of the Thrones, a brand that I love. And this is a cotton, organic cotton eye mask. And this is, with castor oil, really important. It needs to be in a glass bottle because plastic, again, it draws out toxins. So if you have plastic bottle, then it, the plastic is in the castor oil. You don't want that. And you want organic castor oil. And I basically dabble it around my eyes and then, you know, do a little bit of a lazy eight. I find that really relaxing with eyes closed, do a little bit of a lazy eight. And I have a little wand and I put, sometimes I put something on my lashes and my eyebrows and then I put the, the my eye mask the cotton eye mask on like, you know, overnight, overnight. If you want to put castor oil into your eyes, I sometimes get a little bit into the eyes when I put it on the lashes, right? And I sometimes, um, that's totally fine. Uh, your vision will be a little blurry, obviously. So don't do that during the day, do that definitely at night. And if you want to put castor oil directly purposefully into your eyes as drops, you need to make sure that you buy sterile castor oil. So don't, you know, this is, this is very clean organic castor oil, but this is not designed as an eye drop that you put into your eye. For that, you need the sterile. Um, Dr. Grossman has some of those in his shop, I think, the sterile castor oil. Yeah. I think so. It's, yeah. At naturaleyecare.com. Yeah. So I, I totally love the castor oil and it's been really, I don't, I've never really had severe dry eye, but it's just been mm -hmm. really, really feeling good. And it also helps you just, yeah keep all that you know the wrinkles and it just feels it just feels amazing yeah so. yeah I've heard similar reports from a lot of my students uh, who have dealt with with dry eyes and they haven't really felt much relief from other things and yeah castor oil is kind of a simple solution natural solution that that could be worth uh, trying out and um, I also it, it's kind of similar since you do that at night before bed and then wear the eye mask that also kind of hits on the topic of eye masks in general uh, for sleeping because sometimes people's eyes dry out overnight especially if you've got air circulating in the room with a fan or air conditioning and so it's kind of like two topics sort of of like you know sleeping in a dark room in general but then also having maybe something covering the eyes so that it's not just about the darkness, it's also about keeping the moisture and preventing that, that evaporation happening overnight. That's a really good point. And, you know, I've actually, I know some people about the eyes, they might've had surgeries on the eyelids where the eyes don't actually close all the way. Right. And that is a really important indication for wearing an eye mask that you actually, mm -hmm. you know, don't have that evaporation. And this is one thing that Dr. Marisol talked about. She's the creator of the Queen of the Thrones. She has the eye mask, not dark, but light, because at night, right, it blocks enough. And I, I have a really bright porch light from my neighbors, but it blocks enough light at night for me to like you know, to get that darkness. And then in the morning, not so much in the winter, but in the morning when you wake up, you have it's a little bit better when you when the sun already rises and you get up, you know, after it's it's bright outside. It kind of gives you a slower transition versus when you have a really black one. I have one called Mindfold, 
that's yeah. you know that's it's plastic but it's what mine what's nice about mindful and i don't think i have it here but that one is little like um what do you call it like foam like holes for your eyes it blocks mm -hmm. everything comp it's great i'm going to use it on the plane it blocks everything it's pitch black dark and it could be the brightest day but for sleeping yeah. that, you know you take that off and then you kind of get thrown into the brightness versus this one gives you this kind of nice transition assuming it's not winter and i get up right now before the sun rises so right now it wouldn't make that much difference but for for summer month it, it's nice to have a lighter colored one that's cool yeah and, and i mean there's so many different brands and options out there and um i was surprised to find that tempurpedic makes a, a sleep mask so that's the one i've been using because it has like memory foam because i love the mindfold but I can't really sleep in the mindfold because it's no. it's a little too kind of cumbersome. So the Tempur-Pedic one true. is like memory foam and it doesn't put pressure on the eyes at all. Um, but yeah, I like that concept of like, how can we also uh, utilize that early morning light and not have the the sleep mask just have us kind of blacked out until <laughs> too late. But um, I also do have, you know, blackout shades. And I think it does make a difference, um, you know, just sleeping in a darker room compared to having that street light coming in the window. Absolutely. I mean, studies have shown that people, even if there's a candle or some very, very faint light and you think, oh, I'm sleeping well, right. I'm sleeping great. They found that your, your heart rate and when they looked at all the biometrics that people actually don't sleep as deeply when there's light in the room. So I totally agree. It's really important to have a dark room and blackout shades are also something I have. Um, there's still a little light coming through from the neighbors, <laughs> but it's, yeah, yeah. it's definitely way better. Um, so one other thing, oh no, we have a couple more things, but we wanted to talk a little bit about, you can also do physical, right? I teach my role and relax classes and we do sometimes use the massage balls, you know, to kind of get circulation around the eyes going, but there's also acupressure points that you can use around the eyes. So Nathan, you want to walk us through those and I can demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I like to explore the eye orbits, you know, the whole bony ridge around the eyes. So we're not actually touching the eyeballs at all. It's just what I'm looking for is these little notches or indentations or grooves in the bone. So like beneath the eyebrow, I like to use my thumbs to find those two main ones kind of towards the bridge of the nose, but um, it might be different for everyone. And And you're just kind of feeling around for areas of sensitivity or areas that feel different and I make my way out along the bony ridge kind of pause on any little spots that feel tender and like you said with the lacrimal glands being out on the outer corners of the eye orbits that may be a particular spot that might be helpful it's kind of closer to the temples or the outer edges of the eyebrows um, whether we're just kind of pressing gently or pulsing in and out or doing little circles, or I also really like tapping on these acupressure points. And we've got points along the lower eye orbit as well. And yeah, anything to kind of, I, I think in the, in the idea of acupuncture and acupressure, it's, it's this idea that maybe there's some blockage or some lack of flow. So once again, we're kind of breaking down those blocks and just allowing more flow to get up to the eye area. And I have noticed that sometimes after doing the acupressure points, um, it's not always that my eyes feel immediately more lubricated, but there's a sense of more openness and just kind of like, seems like more circulation is happening on maybe a deeper level or energetic level. Yeah, that's so true. And it's connected to the Chinese meridians. I think the gallbladder is on the temples. The adrenals is here on the side. The kidneys is underneath. And then liver, I forgot exactly where the liver is, but basically it's definitely connected to those energy meridians. And so doing a little bit of acupressure tapping. Um, and I like, you can even combine those things, right? The castor oil and maybe do it with All the right. castor oil yeah. on. It's a little bit more slidey, glidey, but it's like, but yeah, it's always mm -hmm. interesting to find, like I always notice usually there's one point that's a little bit more sensitive or tender. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a good one. And then in connection to that is something that I think you teach as well, the tense and release, which is something I do with kids a lot too, where you, we do the vowels, I just make up, but you basically like turns up your face, ah, 
No. Ah, no, no. You say the different vowels or something like that. But do you? I don't. Do you have a different method of doing that tense and release? Yeah, well, kind of like you did it out of coming out of palming, where you just kind of do some gentle squeezes and releases. Um, I, I really like for people to explore the amount of tense that they do. Um, so it doesn't always have to be like a hundred percent tense, where it's like squeezing as hard as we can and then releasing. Uh, I think it's also fun to explore, like, can I do a 50% tense where you still squeeze, but it's not as hard as you possibly can. It's like a half squeeze and then letting that go. Cause I feel like sometimes um, the, the bigger squeezes are very effective. And then in other cases, some of the smaller ones, the more subtle ones may actually release something on a more subtle level that the, the more extreme one kind of misses over. Um, so yeah, you can kind of explore that whole spectrum of like 1% to a hundred percent tension when you do that squeeze. And I do like to inhale like you, like you did. I like to inhale when I squeeze and then exhale when I release. Um, and yeah, just make sure that we're actually doing our best to just totally let go when we do release and we're not accidentally holding on to the tension <laughs> by accident. I love that with the percentages. It also gives you a really good sense of um, you know, controlling of how much, you know, sometimes I find in my own vision improvement journey and that with my clients that sometimes there's no awareness of tension, of strain in the eyes of the body. It's almost like when I first got known to that somebody, I was going through my divorce back then a long time ago and somebody touched my jaw and said, oh, that's concrete. And I had like no feeling like now I'm super aware, like when I feel like some tightness coming. But back then I had uh -huh. no bodily, I, I was almost disconnected from my body. It's like, I didn't, you know, and so the more you practice this, or even with relaxation, you know, you, you go into palming, can I relax 50% more? Can I relax or 10% more? Can I, you know, I like that. It's a very fine way of fine tuning your body, your physical, your awareness of everything. So I think that's a really, really great idea to do that. Um, so we have a couple more things. Um, one thing would obviously be, I think you touched on that a little bit with the air, a humidifier, especially in the dry winter, if you have a wood bonding stove, or if you have, or if you live in a generally really, really super dry climate, usually you get adjusted to that. Um, I, I always notice when I travel somewhere like to the desert, my, I'm so dry, my lips are dry, and then eventually you get used to that, but you could use a humidifier if your air is really dry, um, that's a good tip. Do you, I don't know if you have anything to add to that one. Just a quick story. I, I had a student from India who moved from India to North Carolina. And it's quite humid in India. And I mean, growing up in, in uh, Pennsylvania, when I moved to North Carolina, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so humid here. But apparently <laughs> that can't hold a candle to the humidity in India. And so... <laughs> He, uh, this guy was really struggling with this dry eye syndrome developing from being, you know, not only in a new climate, but also being in all this air conditioning, you know, cause there's just less air conditioning, you know, so that really like, he ended up moving to Florida. <laughs> like he, he tried, he got his humidifier. He, he did all these tips we were talking about, but at the end of the day, he just felt like, you know what, I just need to be back in a more humid climate. Um, so he actually like relocated down to Florida and ended up feeling like his eyes really were much less dry. Um, so that, you know, that is a little bit of an extreme case, but definitely a factor that, that people can really think about like, you know, their environment, not only outdoor, but indoor as well. And just see how that is connected, could be connected. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, we don't, we didn't really get, or we don't get into the root causes of dry eyes too much today but you know we had Divya talk about last week and you know how you have to address with gut health and inflammation and hormones could be mm. a reason as we get older right there's more dryness overall the climate there's so many other factors but we wanted to give you more hands-on you know tips and tools that you can implement right now versus the bigger picture of like addressing your whole gut health which is important and your inflammation um so another thing that i think on our list that's kind of the last more like physical um is healthy fats right so it's super important to have healthy fats we do get way too many inflammatory seed oils i forgot recently somebody told me 
I think 100 years ago, we had barely any inflammatory seed oils in our diet. We didn't have canola oil. We didn't have sunflower oil, rapeseed oil. Uh, what, what else? Um, the safflower oil, the soybean oil. Now we have all these vegetable oils, all these inflammatory oils, omega-6 in our diet. And we really, really need the omega-3 fatty acids. And ideally, they recommend a one-to-one -one ratio. And I did one of those things where I had to track everything I was eating for like three days. And it was incredibly challenging. And I eat super healthy. I mean, I eat, only eat avocado oil or olive oil, some coconut oil, but I was really focusing on that. And so that's like chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, walnuts are really good for omega-3 fatty acids. Um, if you eat fish, salmon, but you have to eat a lot of fish and also supplementation. Um, Dr. Andrew Huberman, who's on has his Huberman Lab podcast, he recommends that at least one gram of EPA, DHA. And so that's, you know, that's that's a lot of, you know, either fish oil or I take um, vegan. So I take um, algae based uh, omega-3 supplements in addition to eating, you know, getting a lot of omega-3 fatty acids into my diet. But I also supplement and I'm trying to get to like one and a half grams a day. Helps with mood, helps with so many things and dry eyes. With dry eyes, it's actually they've done studies and they haven't come to a real conclusion like, you know, where they just looked at omega-3s on their own and they, they some studies showed a benefit for dry eyes, some studies didn't show any difference, but we do need them in general. And again, that lipid layer of the tear film. So having those healthy fats in your diet is super important, even if that alone is not going to be the magic thing, but it, it's an important thing to add. I think it's for all of us to, to, you know, to include that in our diet and be very aware of those inflammatory um, seed oils because they do cause so much damage in the whole body. And again, the dysfunctioning of the, the, the eyes, right? The whole system of the eyes and the circulation and the water and the lipids. I mean, it's so much more complicated than just putting a bunch of eye drops into your eyes, right? The whole system is not just, you know, it's not just here. <laughs> it's, it's basically based on a lot of other things that are happening in your body. So yeah, wanted yeah. to just get that in. Yeah, it's so important for people to just take a look at what they're putting in their body, solids and liquids, and just realize that certain things dry us out, dehydrate us and inflame us. And then other things kind of support us and keep us a little more, more in the, in the safe space. Coffee, coffee is, a, and I love coffee, but that's why having enough sodium and magnesium and those electrolytes is really, really important in your water. And so we have like, we really have like a couple more things, but do you want to talk a little bit about light therapy and sunlight, which might not be the obvious choice for dry eyes, but um, tell us a little bit more yeah, about. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, especially ever since moving to Vermont and it's a much less sunny place than I'm used to in North Carolina, um, I've, I've gotten my sun lamp back out and I use it a lot more. Um, so this is a 150 watt incandescent spotlight that screws into a clamp and when i plug this in the first one <laughs> there you go so if i plug this in and i just shine it right at my face i've got about 12 inches between me and the light source and it's immediate heat it's a heat lamp so my eyes are immediately warm and i can feel my muscles relaxing Obviously, this is dependent on your light sensitivity. You know, if you're light sensitive and you feel like it's like, well, that's too bright and it's not comfortable, you wouldn't want to do this. But if you've done some sunning or some light therapy and you're comfortable with the super bright 150 watt light, you know, just moving back and forth and certainly going back and forth between the, the sunning and the palming to kind of create that um, contrast between the light and the dark. But yeah, whether you're just doing basic eyes closed sunning and Obviously, it's called sunning because we ideally would actually do it out in the direct sunlight, but that actually does act as a really nice little supplement or a way to create potentially some nice moisturization in the eyes just from that brightness and the heat that you get from either the artificial light or the natural light from the sun. Yeah, I love that. I my lamp, I actually got that uh, originally when I was in Germany. We could now in, I'm in, in Los Angeles, so we have usually no lack of sunshine, but it's a really great yeah. way to get that heat and get that, like you said, to get that helps also with the tears. And also when you alternate with, um, I think you call them sun sandwiches, 
when you alternate mm -hmm. the sunning and the palming and you get that lightness and the darkness that really helps like some stimulate the blood flow and the circulation in the eyes. So that's a really, really, and it feels really relaxing and good. And the heat also helps about what we talked about with the compresses earlier. And somebody was asking on YouTube about the splashing or the hot and warm cold towel. You could alternate them or you could just do warm or you can like in the winter, I usually just do warm things, but you can yeah. also alternate them for circulation um, versus just warm helps open up all the ducts and, you know, get that waxy, you know, get that tear film or liquid. So the heat is, is really generally good, but alternating is more the circulatory improvements. So, mm -hmm. Um, and I think that kind of, we have a few questions, but before we get to that, you know, we just, we don't want to, there's not no secret thing that we're going to teach you here, but it could also be emotional, you know, reasons. It could be suppressed grief. I've heard a, a story of a woman, um, as I was translating at a vision conference, um, who was using EDMR to, to release a traumatic, some tra trauma with a practitioner, obviously that was sharing that yeah. story and I was just translating it but it was it struck mm -hmm. me as really interesting in a way because you know she had um she had miscarriages and her and had never grieved the losses of her unborn children and once she brought up that trauma like the tears were flowing and the dry eyes were gone forever like it was basically just bottled up like not letting herself yeah. cry or not you not not letting herself grieve and mourn and so that could be could be that could also be a case in that case that's obviously a little bit longer process there's no like just put a castor oil mask on if you have um but think about if there's any emotional um things that might have caused you to stop crying or to stop you know feeling yeah stop mm -hmm. crying yeah and i resonate a lot with that because i identified that was part of my problem as well was like a holding back tears for years and years and years and just not really tapping into that, that emotional processing side. And interestingly, my, one of my entry points back into that was actually Pixar movies. Oh, really? So like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't start off by like, Oh, I need to investigate my trauma and why I, I stopped mean, crying you know, several years ago. I just play a Pixar movie and just start crying because they're all really like touching and, and heartwarming. And like, they always have these great, you know, lessons built into them. So that helped me access that feeling of, Oh, this is what crying feels like. So I, it had been so long and then that, but it was like kind of it was just about the movie, you know, but it was touching something inside of me. And so that kind of helped me then be like, okay, maybe there is something that I want to kind of look at for myself and process. Um, and I think you also were joking around about, you know, cutting onions, how that makes you cry as well. So sometimes it's as simple as just cutting an onion or watching a, a movie that will kind of facilitate that. And then maybe we may feel a little bit more equipped to then actually kind of dig deeper. I love that. That's a great example. And I think especially in our culture, you know, men don't cry, boys don't cry. And, you know, we have so much in our upbringing where we weren't allowed or don't be as a woman, you know, don't be such an emotional, like what I forgot what they usually say. Don't be so emotional, you know, like those things that we hear, um, which, you know, I love that you just use the movie and, you know, sometimes you're like, I don't want to be the one crying, you know, in the movie theater. But I think this is a really, I love it pick some movies or where can you connect to your emotions? And I think a lot of, I don't know if it's related to certain vision problems, but I feel like sometimes we harden as we get older and we might, you know, kind of worry more about what other people think. And the same with the yawning, right? We like, instead of doing something that feels natural, we might suppress those things. So maybe, yeah, I love that. <laughs> Watch something that makes you cry or makes you laugh because when we laugh really hard, we also produce tears. So it could Very also good be point. a good comedy show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that basically uh, concludes everything. And I'm going to look a little bit on YouTube right now if there's any questions. Um, Mark, Mark just said, I tried sleeping with an eye mask, but I didn't like this feeling when I put the mask off my eyes. The light even during the not sunny morning was too strong and caused discomfort in my eyes. So I guess it wasn't really a question. Um, well, maybe that's why the light one might be good, uh, Marta, in your case, because that you don't have that drastic 
you know, where you put the black one or the mindful is the extreme example where it's just like you go from like super black to like whatever environment you're in, it might be really bright. Um, so maybe try, and this is really soft too. I don't like those bulky ones that when you lay on the side or they press against your temples. Um, yeah, there, there's no other question here on YouTube. So um, I don't know if you have someone on Zoom, but we also have our time extra, our little Q&A on Zoom with the Clear Vision Club separately. Um, so do you want to add anything to finish this off? Um, where people subscribe to your to Nathan's channel, his Integral Eyesight on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel if you found this helpful. I'm here every Wednesday with cool guests like Nathan and other vision teachers or other doctors or wellness professionals or anybody that can help us shine some light on eyesight and vision and how we can improve it. Um, anything else you want to add, Nathan? No, I think this was great. I think it was a, a quite an extensive list to, to cover some some main main topics today. And uh, and yeah, I think it's pertinent, at least, um, you know, in, in the northern hemisphere. Now we're approaching the winter solstice next week. And, you know, it's this kind of darker, colder uh, time of year. And, you know, we're inside more, maybe more like heat, artificial heat and things like that, that you know, these tips, I think, can really help carry us through the the winter months into the more kind of humid time of the year. Uh, so yeah, hopefully this is good timing for people to to get some actionable tips and help with this. And even if, if you don't have dry eye syndrome, I think all this stuff is like super helpful in general, uh, just for maintaining healthy eyes uh, as a whole. So Oh, absolutely. I love, I mean, many of my clients have just done sunning and palming and blinking and I've seen ma massive improvements in the eyesight. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, we get carried away. I love my cast oil eye mask, but I find it's really interesting on Instagram. Um, and I'm just rambling on a little bit, but I find like sometimes, oh, tell me exactly like the tool, right? The thing. It's like, it's almost like we love to have these little, and I love it too. I'm not saying this is bad. And get, I love it. But sometimes, you know, think more of behavior change. Think of like how we're blinking, you know, maybe put a stick on your computer. Like I didn't use to blink at all. And now when I try to do a video to show staring, I can't even do it. It's like, I can barely last like eight seconds of not blinking and it hurts my eyes. And before I could probably do yeah. a minute. Um, so teaching yourself these, these habits of blinking and resting your eyes, getting more sunlight, maybe closing your eyes more, maybe doing some palming. I always say pee and palm, you know, you can be in the bathroom and palm for just a few deep breaths or, you know, so sometimes those things are really make a bigger bang, you know, so, so then, but I'm not saying that these tools are bad. That's not my point, but it's like, you know, like when you look at the eye doctor talks about dry eyes, it's always like what drops to use, what kind of cool, laser treatment, whatever they have now, or some kind of mask that just humidifies that, you know, that sealed off where you, you kind of, you know, when you breathe and it's getting fogged up and yes, those are all helpful. But at the end of the day, you can teach your body to not have dry eyes anymore. You can, and then maybe use some additional supplementation or omega threes or cast or whatever it is, but really focus on addressing habits because that really makes a long-term difference in your life. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because it's like maybe you get a lot of temporary initial relief from the the hot compress or the castor oil or or um you know some humidifier or something like that but to me the habits are really what lead to the more permanent long lasting mm -hmm. uh changes that can come through. So yeah, great great point there. Well, thank you Nathan. Um we just got a few thank yous here on YouTube. Thank you, thank you Michael and Susan and otherwise we don't have any more questions. So this is the last Clear Vision Wednesday of the year 2022. So I see you all again next year and Nathan, I don't know, do you have anything coming out on uh, YouTube or anything uh this for the rest of the year or what's coming in your future? Yeah, the only, I've got just one more for the year as well. I just mentioned the winter solstice. So I like to do these palming parties on YouTube live on the solstices and equinoxes. So um let me just get the precise day and time. It's going to be on December 21st, next Wednesday, so a week from today at 12 p.m. Eastern. So that would be 9, 9 a.m. Pacific. And yeah, we just, uh, we palm our eyes for about 30 minutes and I, I do a guided visualization. And then we, yeah, just do another 30 minutes or so for Q&A. Um, 
So yeah, if you feel like if you enjoyed the palming part of our, our session today, uh, come back for that. And the replays of the um, previous palming parties are up on YouTube as well. Love it. So next Wednesday, 21st of December, I actually wanted to do a solstice clip on Wednesday and then it decided against it because I'm going to be with my family in Germany and it's 9 p.m. there. And usually I don't, you know, I'm, but your your thing is earlier because it's 12 p.m. Eastern, which is 6 p.m. in Germany. So I might. All right, because uh, you're going to be in Europe. Yeah. 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 So we decided to not do the one. So perfect. So we have the palming party on the 21st. And yes, um, this will also stay on YouTube. Follow Nathan. He's also on Instagram. He has his two podcasts. So make sure you follow us. You listen in. It's all free. The two podcasts that you have are free. Um, I know you have a Patreon opportunity for one of them or for both of them. But basically, there's so many free resources, you guys, that you can use to start improving your vision and uh, make little changes day by day. So... Bye-bye, YouTube. Thank you so much.